I think sometimes it's important to step back and get a picture of what is going on around us to understand what is happening in a given situation. That will also lead us to understand what we should be doing about that situation. Remember the sons of Issachar in 1 Chronicles 12, 32, where God says about the sons of Issachar, they knew, they knew the signs of the times and knew what Israel ought to do. In other words, these men understood what was going on around them. And because of that, they knew how to lead the people of God. And we, as leaders in the body of Christ, whether you have a position or a title, all of us have a sphere of influence. All of us can lead in that sphere of influence. So every one of us ought to know what is happening in our world today and how can we lead others into becoming a real follower of Jesus Christ. Well, 84% of the people in our world identify with some kind of religion. There are 2.2 billion Christians on our planet today. We are not only the largest faith in the world today, we are the fastest growing. Muslims have 1.6 billion uh, followers of their faith. And I think it's important to remember that for a Muslim, to be counted as a Muslim, all he has to do is be born in a Muslim country, a Muslim-dominated country, or be born in a Muslim family. Then he is automatically counted as a Muslim. Well, we know that's not true of Christianity. To be a Christian, you must receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior and give your life to Him in obedience to His Lordship and be a follower of His. We cannot just be born in a quote-unquote Christian country. We must truly become a follower of Jesus Christ to be counted as a Christian. Well, there are also a billion Hindus. There are 500 million Buddhists uh, amongst folk religions. We call that animism. There are 400 million. Many other religions there for 58 million. Judaism, there are 14 million uh, Jews in the world. Well, there is another group, and it should concern all of us as believers in Jesus Christ. We call them unaffiliated, but the real word for them is nons. In other words, these are people who would say they don't believe in anything, or they have kind of this um, mix of different kinds of beliefs. They might even say God is out there somewhere, but it's really undefined and very vague. And this is one of the faster-growing groups in our world today. Now, even though 71% of the people in North Korea would say that they're a non, they don't believe in a God, yet too many of them have made their earthly leader a God to themselves. And so they, in a sense, they have a faith. It's just not directed in the spiritual realm. 52% of the people in China would say that they are nons as well. Now, what's concerning for us is this group is growing the fastest in areas where Christianity was historically dominant. And here I'm talking about Europe and North America. There is an increasing move towards secularism. And not just towards uh, kind of I don't know and I'm not really sure, but almost a hatred for God. In other words, not just being an atheist, but being an anti-theist. And you can see it in a variety of different ways uh, being manifest within these cultures. Well, we need to look at what's happening with the growth of Christianity around the world. A hundred years ago, 80% of the Christians on our planet were in Europe and North America. But today, they are scattered throughout every single nation of the world. And where, as I said, historical Christianity in the West, Europe and North America, was dominant, it's now becoming less and less. And the major growth of global Christianity has shifted into other continents like South America, Africa, and even throughout Asia and Russia as well. Now, out of the 2.2 billion Christians that are on earth today, 1.2 billion, in other words, just a little over half, would call themselves Great Commission Christians. And they call themselves that because they act aggressively in sharing their faith based on the mandate of Matthew chapter 28, 18 through 20. And the balance of the other part of the group of Christians, so about a billion of those who would call themselves Christ followers, are from the Catholic or Orthodox group of churches. Orthodox meaning like Syrian Orthodox, Eastern Orthodox, Russian Orthodox. But regardless of which group 
these Christians are in. They are our brothers and sisters, and they are all followers of Jesus Christ. Now, this group's average growth rate of the Great Commission Christians is at 6.9%. That means they're growing faster than the total population growth rate of the world. That's amazing. God is reaching out to the people of this world. He is preparing the people of this world for His soon return. And He is wanting to bring a great harvest to Himself before that time. But we also need to remember that this growth rate comes at a cost. Now, there are many, many people in this world who have never heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. According to missiologists who study this very closely, there are approximately 16,000 people groups. Now, these are not nations with geographical boundaries and governments. These are significant people groups identifiable by their language, their culture, and sometimes by their physical setting. Now, of these 16,000 people groups in our world today, over 6,500 of them remain unreached. They have never heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. Many of those peoples live in areas where it is a death sentence to be a Christian. But I can tell you from personal experience of visiting with those Christians and teaching those Christians in those countries, in those areas of the world, the church is alive and growing. Nothing can stop the gospel of Jesus Christ. God is reaching out to all the peoples of the world. And He is wanting to fulfill Matthew 24, 14, which tells us, if you look into your Bibles, here's what it says. It says, And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world. As a witness to all the nations, the word for nations there is the word ethnosis, all the people groups, and then the end will come. We don't have to worry about the end, when it's going to happen, or what are the signs of it. What we need to be concerned about is fulfilling our God-given assignment of preaching the gospel into all the people groups of the world. And when we do that, God will bring the end. I think if we are faithful, if we are diligent, if we will follow God's pattern, His strategy of how He wants to reach the world, I think we could reach all the people of this world with the gospel in the next maybe even 10 years or 15 years, and we would see the soon return of Christ. Hallelujah! I want that to happen as soon as it can. And what we need to do is we need to fulfill our assignment that God has given us. Well, now when you study the growth of the church, you can see that in post-World War II, the greatest amount of growth came from Western missionaries being sent out. But currently, the greatest growth is happening from indigenous, in other words, nationalized evangelical movements around the world. And two of the great examples of that are in China and in Latin America. Today, there are over 75 million Christians in China. Some estimate over 100 million. At their current rate of growth, by the year 2030, there will be more Christians in China than any other nation on earth. And the church is continuing to expand and grow. But the church of China is not only growing within China, but now they are sending out missionaries to other nations. And I think here's something we need to come to grips with, that the national church, the, the enculturated indigenous church of any particular people, group, or nation are best equipped to reach their people and to reach the people that surround them. Right now in Latin America, they have birthed over 400 mission agencies with more than 10,000 missionaries serving mostly amongst the unevangelized people of this world, especially Muslims. This is amazing. It's a work of the Holy Spirit, but it's happening amongst people who have taken very seriously Christ's words to us to reach the nations for the gospel of Jesus Christ.